Praise the Lord and good morning, good morning, good morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and I am already glad in it. Many of you are already helping me to evangelize. If you have not, I need you to go ahead and tag. I need you to share. We're jumpstarting our week with the Holy Spirit, jumpstarting our week in prayer. And I am excited about what God is going to do on today. I am excited about what God is going to do on this week. And you know, I am already excited about Friday night, this Friday night. It all happens. It all shifts. We go to another dimension in God on this Friday night. I am so excited about what the Lord is going to do, what he's doing in this season. Thank you all for tagging. Thank you all for sharing. Listen, if you missed that shut in, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I cannot even, I still cannot put into words what the Lord did. I cannot put into words how he met us there. I cannot put into words the deliverance, the breakthrough, the testimonies from that shut in. I am so blessed by God about how he met us there. Listen, the people came ready. They came expecting and God delivered like he always does. We are still in recovering. We are still trying to recover from that shut in. Listen, God did a miraculous thing. I am so excited about the, the about the residue. Oh, my God, about the residue that was left from that shedding. It was 16 years in the making and I'm already like, okay, God, when we going to do another one? When you going to release me to do another one? Because I love what God did with and through his people. Um, he truly met us there. Oh my God. Oh, I, I, when my, when my mind go back to it, it's just like, I just, I just go there. I am so excited about what God is doing in this season. But listen, as I woke up this morning before my alarm clock went off, I'm, I'm always, whenever I have the weeks of prayer, I am so excited about how he um, wakes me up um, like with a sense of urgency. With I got something to tell my people. I got something for you to share with my people. And this morning he woke me up and the word was simply this, suddenly. <laughs> oh, Lord, drop in that chat suddenly, suddenly. And he began to tell me, he said, um, he began to drop these words in my spirit. I hope they don't let they don't they shouldn't miss this moment. It's a suddenly moment. It's a right now moment. It's a, see some things that, go, okay, here we go, Holy Spirit. He said, some things that I'm going to do in this season, you're not going to have to fast for. Who Lord. He said, it's going to be a suddenly. Who Jesus. He said, you've been praying. You've been waiting. He said, you're not already fasted about it. He said, this is about to be a suddenly turnaround. Oh God. I listen, when he gave me that this morning, I was sitting there like, oh God, because it, this is not the first time he has dropped that in my spirit. And I began to watch that manifestation. Listen, and because before when he did this, it was a matter of me going on my knees to pray about something. And before I got up off my knees, I had the answer. Before I got up off my knees, he was already delivered. Tracy, that, that's what I'm talking about. That Amos 9, a suddenly blessing a suddenly breakthrough. He said in this, he said, for my children that are obedient, listen, for my children that are obedient, he said, I'm about to be a, do a suddenly thing. He said, I've seen, I've heard your prayers. I've seen your tears. They came up in my nostril as sweet incense. He says, now it's time for a suddenly. Who Jesus? A suddenly. That mean, listen, <laughs> that mean your mouth about to fall open. Like, huh? Did this just, he say suddenly. Oh, Lord. And I know when God started doing that, it's not a one time thing. It's almost like a chain reaction. I've experienced many times before. And it's like, I OK, it's, it's almost like God is saying, OK, I know you've been praying about it for a long time. I know you've been fasting about it. I know you've been doing it. I know you've been believing. He said, now I'm about to do a suddenly thing. Be in position. Oh, God, be in position to receive the suddenly. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Be in position. To receive the suddenly. Who God? He already now this morning, he's already given us two things: position, listen, position and obedience. Don't miss the uh oh, drop in the chat. Don't miss the moment. Mm, don't miss the moment because watch this. Whenever your suddenly is about to break, Satan is gonna try you. Who Lord, whenever your suddenly is about to break, 
Satan will try you. Why? Because he tried to get you off task. He tried to get you off focus. So you miss the moment. Don't miss the moment. Mm -mm. Don't miss the moment. Don't miss. Oh, Jesus. Don't miss the moment. Suddenly, 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 all week, I already see it. Suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. Last week when I dropped in the chat, um, God was about to do something on that day because I felt it all. Listen, I felt it all in me, all through me. So I had just dropped on Facebook. God is about to do something big today. God is about to do something great. Today. I can't remember. I can't quite remember how I worded it. But on that day, God did just what he said. <laughs> oh, Jesus. He did just what he said. And now he's dropping in my spirit suddenly, suddenly, suddenly breakthrough, suddenly manifestation, suddenly the stuff you've been praying about, suddenly, 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 he said, I'm about to do it. I'm about to do it. Listen, let, let, let's get into this word this week. This week, God has dropped in my spirit um, and he still me has he still has me in the vein of prayer. He still has me in the vein of prayer. This has been going on. I know now since April, because I remember I was on spring break and that's when he started talking about prayer to me. And, we, and then I ministered behind the veil. And so it has not changed. He has me in that vein. And actually on I think it was Saturday morning. I got up and I was like doing some things around the house and the Lord dropped in my spirit. He said, I'm taking my, listen to this. He said, I'm taking my people back to the foundation, mm. back to the foundation, back to prayer. Listen, back to prayer. He's and God began to tell me, he said, because the thing about, it, he said, we have gotten, he said, society, the church has gotten so used to the praise break. Oh God, listen to this. And y'all know how I feel about the praise break. I, I, I really don't have nothing against it. But I need you to understand why you praising him like that. Mm. I need you to understand that I'm praising him and I'm, I'm praising him with the holy dance and with the shout. And I'm doing all that because of the word, not because of my emotion. Uh oh, not because of my emotions, because you can go to a concert. Listen, you can go to a concert and the euphoria that you feel in the atmosphere make you pass out. Because you're so excited about who's up there on stage. So I don't want you to get, I don't want you to get it confused with, listen, I'm bucking and I'm shouting and I'm passing out because of the sound. Oh, Jesus. But I'm bucking and I'm passing out because of the word, because of what he said, because of who he is. So God began to tell me, he says, daughter, he said, he said I'm going to use you in, listen, this is not even my topic today. I promise y'all. He says, he says, I, he said, daughter, he says, tell my children, my remnant, listen, my remnant that I'm taking them back to the foundation of prayer. Watch this. Because I begin to say, Lord, and I was thinking back on when I first began in ministry and I was, and he, and God had me with the mothers of the church and I was tearing around the altar and I was doing all this stuff. And my bishop at the time, Bishop L.B. Garris, he wouldn't let me go out with the people my age. He said, no, I need you with the mothers of the church. And I was looking like, why I got to hang with the mothers of the church. And, and so he had me with the mothers of the church. And 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 I, I was thinking about that. And they would have me, we need you to lead prayer. And I'm looking like, I ain't never led prayer before. I mean, I prayed in private. I ain't never done that before. But it was back then, all those years ago in the early 90s, when I began to tarry around the altar and spend time, hours in intercession, into intercession. And that was when God began to birth something in me, a passion for deliverance. And so God began to tell me, he says, because what I did you do is take my people back to the foundation of prayer, because that is where they're going to get to know me. Mm. That is where they're going to get to seek my face and not my hand. Uh oh. That is where they're going to get in my face and seek me for who I am, not for what I can always provide for them. Mm. And when you get to know me, oh God, he said, and when you get to know me, he said, then I'll automatically provide because I want the absolute best for you. He said, so I need you to take my children back to the foundation of prayer, of shedding in, of fasting, those things that carried us all those years ago that somehow or another, we have gotten away from. Why do you think the shut-in was packed like it was? Because everybody's not doing that. Mm. And, and, and it showed me something. God began to show me. He says, daughter, just because everybody is not doing it does not mean my people are not hungry for it. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm going to say that one. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. Just because everybody's not doing it. Everybody's not having intercessory prayer. Everybody's not having shut-ins. Everybody's not calling services and say, it's not about your religion. It's not about your denomination. It's about God. He's everybody not doing it. He said, but just because everybody's not doing it does not, does not mean I don't have a remnant that's not hungry for it. 
Mm. Many of you that have been in my services, they've been in the services of, of the of the sold out, the worship and warfare, all those things. You know that there's always a generation of people that's in there that's looking like, oh my God, what is this? I've never experienced anything like. And God keep telling me, He said, daughter, that's what I'm talking about. He says, I need. He said, will you be the one? Oh God. He says, will you be the one that will go outside the box and go back to the old way? Oh Jesus. Mm. Will you be the one? Watch this. That will go back to the original plan. Oh God. That will go back to the foundation of prayer. That will go back. He said, because there's going to be people that's going to talk about you. Mm. Ain't nobody doing that. Why they got sheets? Why you ain't? And, and this is what I get all the time. Why you ain't selling the oil? Why would I sell it? Woo. Freely I receive, so freely I give. Oh God. Why would you spend all that money and, and having and, and renting out facilities just do, because God told me? I <laughs> got because God told me you can't count up the cost of this thing. You can't say, oh, wait a minute. It's going to cost me X amount of dollars. And, and what if the people don't come? It's going to cost me this. So what if I don't do God is saying, what about if you do? Who am I talking to this morning? What about if you step out on faith and you do exactly what God told you to do and you don't count the people? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Because there be more for you than I get you. Ooh, if, with God on my side. Oh, Jesus, I can't lose. I can't lose. Why? So God began to tell me, he says, daughter, take them back to prayer. He said, I don't care. He said, they going to talk about you. They talked about me. You in good company. Who am I talking to this morning? You're in good company. He says, they're going to talk about you, but do it anyway. Because you're going to get the victory, but I'm going to get the glory every single time. He said, the people going to see my face every single time. I'm going to step in the building every single time. I just need somebody that will follow me. Oh, God, that will follow God. Don't worry about what they saying about you. She's so old school. She's so old fashioned. But look at what God doing for his people. Mm. Look at the breakthrough. Look, look, look at what. And listen, I began to think about this thing. And I was like going through some some papers. And, and I had looked at a paper that I came across where I did a 24 hour prayer. I did a 24 hour prayer. So I lined up people and I said, okay, around the clock. And I, I assigned different hours for them to pray. I said, this is what we're going to be praying. And I looked at the list. It was over 200 people. And God began to tell me, he says, daughter, so if you had not been in position, oh, here we go. If you had not been in position to pray for my people, wonder what would have happened. Who Jesus. He said, if you had not been in position to do what I was telling you to do, he said, because I'm looking for a remnant in this day and in this hour that would do exactly what I said, the way I said it, and do it without faltering. Do it without getting tired. Do it without counting up the cost. Doing it without thinking about the what if, what if, what Because Satan is going to plant that in your mind every single time. You can't do that. Ain't nobody doing it. And what God is saying is that's, that's exactly why I need you to do it. Because ain't nobody else doing it. Oh, Jesus. You're a peculiar people. I'm going to give you a different way to do things. Because he said, because if it's always been done that way and it's not working, why would I tell you to do it the exact same way? That is already being done. Get in position. Get in position. Get in position. Thank you, Minister Pop. He just posted kingdom practices are not old school. They are proven. Oh, Jesus. Now that drop. Listen, he preaching already. Drop in the chat. It's proven. It's proven. It works. It works. It works. Listen, I begin to, and y'all, I promise y'all would get to this today. I begin to look back over my life. And, and it was like, um, I was looking back over my life and I was thinking about the way I grew up and certain things I went through growing up. And I was like, hmm, that was a hard way. Like, were we poor and we just didn't know we were poor because we had so much love? I said, was, was, were we really struggling as children and didn't know it? I was thinking about my life and God began to tell me, he said, but all, he said, I needed to, to all work together to get you to where you are now. So sometimes you have to look back so God can remind you that I was there all the time. Who, Lordy, that I was there all the time. That, mm, I need, you know, in the scripture, when Jesus said, they were saying, why you got to go through Samaria? He said, I got to go through Samaria. Oh, Jesus. So you had to go that way. You had to go through there to get you to where you are now. Why? Because what God is showing you now is those foundations, that thing that you went through, or, or that thing that got you to where you are, that thing that got you to fall in love with God, that thing that got you to be saved is the same thing you need today. 
God begins to tell me, he says, daughter, don't forget what I birthed in you first before I birthed the preacher, mm, before I birthed the prophet. He said, the first thing I birthed in you was prayer. <laughs> oh, God. I remember, listen, because I was, because, okay, this, this is how my life went. So I was raised in a household with my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather, my brothers, my three brothers, and we all went to Baptist church. We went to Baptist church, love Second Calvary Baptist church. That is my foundation. That, that is where I get a lot of my etiquette from. But watch this. When I would go to visit my grandmother, my other grandmother, my dad's mom, Mother Pauline, they were strict holiness. You couldn't have makeup. You had to have on a dress. You had to have a little thing on your head. And we, and when I would visit her, we would go to tarrying services. And they would be on like Saturday morning, like 7 o'clock in the morning. I would be like, oh, my God, why do I have to do this? Why do I? And I was a little girl, maybe about seven or eight years old. And my brother wouldn't have to go. I, and we would both be at my grandmother's house. He wouldn't have to go, but she would make sure, oh, you going. And it was there that I fell in love with the sound of speaking in tongues. Didn't understand it, didn't know what it was because I was Baptist. But I fell in love with it to the point, I'll be like, grandma, 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 are we going to church? Are we going to prayer? Are we going to prayer? Are we going to prayer? And I, I would go to prayer and I, I would see the, the mothers of the church tarrying even then. And that is where it was, that thought, okay, here we go. That is where that fire was ignited in me for prayer and tearing. And God began to tip. He took my mind back. He said, and that has never left you. That is what's, oh Jesus, that is what's carrying you today is your power in prayer. That is what kept, he said, that is why you have a passion for people. You'll pray for anybody. Don't care if they don't like you, know they're talking about you. But when I drop in your spirit to pray, you're going to pray. That is your obligation. Never forget the foundation of what got you to where you are today. Listen, let's go, let's go. So this week we are going to be talking about, we are going to be talking about this topic right here. When we pray. Ooh, God, y'all know this is about to get hot this week. When we pray, drop that in the chat. When we pray. Oh God, I feel it already. When we pray, chains got the break. When we pray. When we pray, breakthrough happens. When we pray, God shows up. When we pray, will you pray? Oh, God. Oh, God. Will you pray? Will you pray? Will you pray? When we pray, let's get into this. Listen, it says, it says, 2 Kings versus 2 Kings chapter 20. Listen, oh, God, I figured this morning. 2 Kings chapter 20. I'm trying to slow it down. Verses 1 through 6. 2 Kings Chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah went to him and said, this is what the Lord says. Oh, God. Mm. I'm trying to hold it this morning. So Isaiah goes to him and he says, this is what the Lord says. Put your house in order. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Whoop. Listen to this from the prophet. Get your house in order. You going to die. <laughs> your sickness, you won't be healed. Ooh, we get mad. Watch this. Hezekiah, after he got these words, turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. And this is what he said. Remember, Lord, I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion. And I have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Listen. Before Isaiah, oh God, I love you. Hmm. Before Isaiah could get to the middle court, the word of the Lord hit him again and he turned around and he went back to Isaiah, back to Hezekiah. And he said, this is what the Lord is saying now. This is what the Lord is saying now. I heard your prayer. Didn't, oh Jesus. He just spoke this this morning. Y'all catch this. I heard your prayer and I seen your tears. I will heal you. God help me. I will heal you. On the third day, on the third day from now, you will go up to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. Not only that, mm, God, not only that, but I'm also going to deliver you and this city from the hand of, the, of King Assyria. I will defend the city, who oh God, for my sake and for the sake of my servants. Who? Y'all, did y'all hear this this morning? Hezekiah, okay. <laughs> so the prophet Isaiah, 
goes to Hezekiah and delivers some bad news. Karen, listen to this. God told me to tell you you're going to die. God told me to tell you he ain't going to heal you. What did Hezekiah do? He didn't get mad. You a false prophet. You a lying wonder. I get how we do. Oh, that ain't of God. I don't receive that. That's what we do. But what did Hezekiah do? Turned his face to the wall. That means he told everybody, oh God, to get out. He even told a prophet, okay, you thank you. Bye. I, 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 you, you spoke what God said. Now leave. Watch this. I love this because Hezekiah respected the word of the prophet. He didn't get mad at the prophet and say, you lying. Honey, she always get, she always delivering bad news. They respected the word of the prophet. What did Hezekiah do? Okay, thank you. I was, you gave me the word. Okay, you can leave now. Everybody get out. What did Hezekiah do? He shut in. Uh-oh. We shut ins ain't necessary. Okay. Hezekiah shut in, and what happened? Before the prophet could get to the middle of the court, God dropped that word in him. Go back and tell him. Ah, oh God, I'm gonna give him 15 more years. And some say God changed his mind. I beg to differ. God didn't change his mind. <laughs> God didn't change his mind. Watch, we're going to dig this out today. Watch this. So it says, it says, Hezekiah was sick unto death. Watch this. We are not told what the issue was, but we do know he was sick. And watch this. Not only was he sick, this going to bless y'all this morning. Not only was he sick, but the sickness was permitted by God. Ooh, ooh, yes it was. The sickness, God allowed it. Mm, watch this. You gonna get the victory, but I'm gonna get the glory. Watch this. The sickness, God allowed it. How do you know God allowed it, Dr. Three? God allowed it because what did he do in the end? In the end, he, he gave him 15 years, but he also delivered his people. <laughs> Hezekiah got the victory, but God got the glory. Watch this. It says, so God tells him, set your house in order. This is what I love about God. Listen, set your house in order for you shall die and not live. God was nice in it. Watch this. Even though I allowed your sickness, I'm going to warn you. I'm going to let you know, you know what? You about to die. I'm giving you time to get right. Oh, Jesus. I'm giving you time to get right. I don't have to warn you. Oh, Jesus. Listen, I don't have to warn you. But God came and told him, get your house in order. Get your affairs in order because you're about to die. He was kind and gave him a warning. Who job? Mm, Jesus, drop in the chat. God will warn you. Are you listening? When the prophet come, are you listening? Who Jesus, he will warn you. God will warn you. He told him, get your house in order. This sickness you got, this sickness you have, you're going to die with it. Watch this. So it says, and then we even know, watch this. How old was Hezekiah when this happened? Watch how old he was. He was only 39. Mm, Jesus. We're not talking about an old man, Rosa. We're not talking about a man that had lived out his years. And he was in the hundreds because that's how long they lived back then. He was 39 years old. Get your house in order. You're about to die. How do you know he's 39? Watch this. If you read, if you read 2 Kings 18 and 2, 2 Kings 20 and 6, and you add them up, it would give you the math that Hezekiah was 39 years old. He was not old. That had to be a blow. 39? And I'm about to die now? What? What? Yes. God sent the word through the prophet. Get your house in order. You're about to die. I don't care how old you are. Mm. Your time is up. 39. Watch this. And so what happened? When the prophet came and gave these words that were so terrible, that were so hard to hear, what did Hezekiah do? He didn't flip out on the prophet and run and start calling people. Honey, here, don't go to them services no more. Don't listen to her no more. Don't listen to him no more. All they do is give you bad news. What about my house? What about my, this is what we do. What about the house? What about the car? What about the husband? What about get your life in order? Oh, Jesus, because you're about to die. 
What about get your life in order because God's sick of, sick of you playing with him? What about time, your time is winding up? What about God is sick of you being lukewarm? What about those types of words? We don't want that. We want the house. Ah, we want the car. We want the husband. We want the white picket fence and the dog called, called Toto. We want all that. What about God? I thank you for the warning. Who Jesus. God, I thank you for giving me a warning. I thank you for stopping me before I, before I made a mess of things. God, I thank you for rebuking me, reproving me. I thank you, God. Hezekiah. Ah, God. When he got dropped in that chat, thank you for the rebuke. Thank you for the rebuke. When Hezekiah got the word from, from Isaiah, he didn't get mad. He didn't get in his feeling. He's to the wall. He shut in and he went to God. And he said, God, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remember, remember what I've done. I've served you. I've been there. I've done it. So he reminded God, because watch this, this was lawful. Oh, I'm, I'm going to help you right here. In the Old Testament, things were based on your obedience strictly. Watch this. I, I'm, I'm going to deal with this. Things were based on your, your obedience. Watch this. It says, he turned his face to the wall. He went in privacy to God. Listen. He went in privacy to God, not to any other man. Uh-oh. Did you hear what Dr. Three told me in prayer? I can't believe. I mean, she ain't know that. But I'm going to help y'all. When you get a prophecy of rebuke, you got to understand that if you're dealing with a real prophet, we see way down the road. You may not even know what's coming. We do. God will just drop it and we say, you know what? When you get to X, Y, and Z, don't do that. It, God will send a warning through his man, woman, his man or woman of his man or woman or his mouthpiece. He will send his word, his warning. And then sometime, not only will he send his warning, he'll show you in a dream. Do you want oh that was just a dream chain? That, that, ain't, that don't mean nothing. Okay. He will send a warning. Watch this. And so it says. He sent the warning. He was 39 years old. He said, get your house in order. You gonna live. Hezekiah went and he shut in. Watch this. And then he began to pray. Remember now, oh Lord. He reminded God. Listen, he reminded God of, of what he had done and who he had been. It says to our ears, Hezekiah's prayer may almost sound ungodly. Listen to this. It, in it, his focus is on self-justification. Watch this and not and his own mercies it is pretty much as if isaiah prayed this lord i've been such a good boy <laughs> and you ain't being fair oh jesus remember what a good boy i've been can you please rescue me that's how his prayer really sounded have we not said that i have i have god i did everything right i mean i did everything you told me to do in this marriage i mean why you why i got the end mm. Why I got the end? I did it the way you told me. I was Proverbs 31 all the way. I was the walking billboard. I love being married. I never looked at another man. I never thought about another man. I was all about family. Why? Have we not said it? I have. I did it the way you told me to do it. I don't understand. I did it the way I saw my grandmother doing it. I catered. I did all that. I don't understand. This ain't fair. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, God. Listen, but under the old covenant, this was the way to pray. Listen, if, if you read Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28, it shows that under the old covenant, blessings or cursings were sent by God on basis based on your obedience or your disobedience. <sighs> old Testament covenant. It was all based on your obedience or your disobedience. On that principle, that's why David wrote Psalms 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill, he who walks uprightly and who he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks in the truth in his heart. Psalms 34. All these all these Old Testament scriptures are based on I can be in right standing if I was obedient or if I was disobedient. Watch this. But we are under. Here we go. A new covenant. Mm, watch this. We are under a new covenant. We are blessed on a principle of faith in Jesus Christ. Uh-oh, watch this. Today, 
I'm not going to go and saying, God, it ain't fair. What about what I did? What about how I served you? What about all them people I prayed for? All the marriages I prayed for and you fixed them. And now look at mine. Mm -mm. God saying, and <laughs> new covenant, <laughs> new covenant. Watch this. The new covenant. We are blessed on the principle of faith in Jesus. Galatians three. Watch this. Hezekiah's principle of prayer isn't fitting for us today. We can't go to God and say, but I did this and I did that and I was obedient and I didn't. We can't do that today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Watch this, John 16. Not in the name of who we are or what we have done. I pray in that name that is above every name. Watch this. I pray in the name that heals, the name that saves, the name that delivers. I don't pray in the name of Elizabeth because Elizabeth has done this. Ooh, what? Watch your prayer language. Watch this. He says, God's word says that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and not by our works, not by our efforts. That's Ephesians 2. Watch this. And then it says, so, so when we pray, we say, God, because of who you are, mm, I pray in that great name. And because of that name, you can deliver. Because of that name, you can set free. Not because of what I've done. Oh, Jesus, watch this. It says, and then Hezekiah wept bitterly. That means, watch this. Hezekiah wept bitterly. That means out of his emotions and disappointment. He was disappointed. Did he tell anybody? No. Ooh, watch this. Did he tell, oh God, this is gonna bless y'all this morning. Did he tell anybody? No. Who did he tell? He told God. He wept bitterly. Strong emotion. I'm disappointed. I've been there. I remember times I prayed and I was beating the floor, crying and screaming. God, why? I don't understand. God, why? That You can do that. Who are you going to with that? Are you going telling everybody? I don't know why God did it. Or are you going to him? God, I don't understand. God, help me understand. God, help me see what you're doing in this. Help me to see you in this. That should be your prayer. Mm. Not running to your friends, your family. God ain't fair. Karen, you in the vein, take it to God. Drop that in the chat. Take it to God. Take it to God. Hezekiah wept bitterly. Watch this. It says he had a strong emotion and he was disappointed. Watch this. And then God answered. This is powerful. Listen to, listen to the things that Hezekiah did. He got bad news from the prophet. Didn't get mad at the prophet. Uh oh. Didn't get mad at the prophet. Turned his face towards the wall, began to pray to God. He's shutting in. He let God know how he felt. Oh, Jesus. He let God know exactly how he felt. Didn't withhold nothing. Mm. Didn't withhold nothing. And I remember times, watch this, Monte. I remember times going to God in prayer saying, I'm so broken. Watch this. I'm so broken. God, it hurts so bad. God, I don't understand why. But watch this. My prayer would always switch. Oh, God, I love you. Before I got up off my knees. But God, you said you would mend the brokenhearted. Mm. God, you said you'd give me peace. You said you'd give me peace that passes all understanding. God, you said you, you would fix me. You said you were the potter and I'm the clay. Mend me. Oh, Jesus. Mend me, God. Who am I talking to this morning? Mend me, God. Put me back together again, God. Make me new. Because when you Make me over God, I'll be better than I was before. God, do it in me. That was how I always ended my prayer, even though I started out disappointed. Mm. Oh, God, I started out disappointed. But I began to tell God, in your words, you said, oh, Jesus, in your words, you said, you, 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 you would mend the broken heart. You're a heart fixer. Oh, Jesus, a mind regulator. Mm, God. Listen, listen. So, so if I'm in the vein, you say you in the vein, you in the vein, you in the vein. Watch it. So it says he was disappointed. He prayed. He turned his face to the wall. He didn't go to his friends, his prayer partner, his pastor, his prophet. He didn't do none of that. He didn't even ask the prophet why. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here we go. He didn't go to the prophet and say, well, you know what? You prophesied X, Y. You prophesied that I'm going to die. Why? Mm. Watch this. Because I'm going to give y'all a tip as, as a prophet of God. I can tell y'all this. We know in part, so we prophesy in part. <clears throat> we never know 100% of the story. <clears throat> 
We know exactly what God gave us for that moment. Nine times out of 10, we don't even remember what we told you. So there's no point in calling me after Friday night. Don't call me Sunday and say, what did God mean when he said, oh, baby, I don't even remember what he said. I'm sorry. Whatever he said, he meant it. Because if God used me to give you a word, baby, you can take that check to the bank. Because guess what? My life, me giving you a word ain't worth my life. Mm. Me giving you a word is not worth the money you're going to sow. Woo, Jesus. See, a lot of prophets ain't going to tell They tell you, okay, I'm going to expose it this morning. A lot of people that say their prophets will prophet lie to you because they want your money. So that is why you have a lot of them lines with houses, cars, and, and all that stuff. But watch this. People that follow my ministry, you know that, that it go deeper than that with me. We're not about, how, listen, and God has used me to say, oh, God going to bless you with a house, a car, land, all that. Yes, but the majority of my prophecies, you're going to hell. Quit playing with God. He's sick of you. God used, listen, God used, God used me in the, because as prophets, you got to understand what your lane is. Mm. There are prophets that prophesy governmental stuff. There are prophets that prophesy deliverance. That's more my lane. There are prophets that prophesy healing. That's more my lane. But watch this. You got to understand as a prophet of God, what is your lane? What is your expertise? Woo God. What is that? Woo Jesus. What is that thing that God has walked you through that I can lay hands and bring forth deliverance through God? What is that vein that you're in? Watch this. So nine times out of 10, I'm not going to prophesy to you that God going to give you a husband. I may tell you something like God showed me that he's going to send two men. One going to look this way. One going to look that way. The one that looked this way is the one that you're going to choose. That's how God may use me. God may use me to tell you, you know what? You're about to fall in the trap. Don't do it. You're about to mess up. Don't do it. And people, so don't call me Sunday. Why did God say, baby, I don't even know what he said. It's an anointing that drops. It hit me on the top of my head and it drops and I give you what God said and I'm out. I, I ain't about interpreting what God said. That ain't my job. I give you what God said. It's up to you to do like Hezekiah. Go to the wall. Woo, Jesus. Turn your face to the wall. I got the prophetic word. Now, God, what? Woo, Jesus. I love you this morning. Let, let, let me stay here because I'm, I'm going to run out of time. So it says, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He poured out his heart to God. And what did God do? He added 15 years to his life. Mm. Watch this. Now, here we come with the question. Did God change his mind. No. <laughs> God, I love you. Did God change his mind? Absolutely not. Y'all know I love the word of God. I could stay here all day. I am believing God that he's going to look, that my gift going to retire me early. <laughs> I told God, I said, you know what, God, I, I think we can do, listen to this. I said, God, I think we can do about five more years, max. Five more years of this teaching thing, Max. And then you're going to let me sit in this word all day and minister to your people. I believe in God for that because I love his word so much because it's just like life to me. It, it, it is. It's, oh, my God. I love it so much because it gives me so much revelation, so much insight. And I can read the same scripture 15 times, get 15 revelations. I love the word of God. But watch this. It says, did God change his mind? I am so excited about this. Oh, my God. Did God change his mind? No. Who, Wendy, watch this. Did God change his mind? Absolutely not. Watch this. Because, watch this. First, God said, you're going to die. You're not going to leave. You, you, you're going to die. Get your house in order. Did God change his mind? No. He only gave him 15 more years. He still died. <laughs> Do the math. He still died. 39 plus 15, so he was still young. Ooh, Jesus. God did not change his mind. He changed the timing. Ooh, Jesus. Watch this. God did not change his mind. He said, because you're still going to die, just not as soon as I first announced it. <laughs> Jesus. Watch this. Second, when God announces judgment, listen to this today. When God announces judgment, it is always, listen to this, God, I love you. It is always an invitation for you to repent and to receive mercy. Mm. If I give you a prophetic word and you don't like it, that's your chance to get right. That's your chance to line up. 
That's your chance to get it in order. Oh, Jesus. So what, listen, listen, it says that whenever God announces a judgment, that is your chance to get your life in order. Watch this. It says, it says, oh God, it says, it says, who, Lord, where am I at? Yeah. Okay. So it's a chance for you to repent and to receive mercy. Then God tells him, tells Isaiah, I've heard Hezekiah's prayer. I've seen his tears. <laughs> Many times God would tell us this. I know you crying. I'm not heartless. I know you crying. I know you tired of going through. I, I know you've been there a long time. I've seen you. I've heard you. Now suddenly, uh oh, before, what did God say? When we opened up, God gave us the word that I'm about to do some suddenly miracles. What did it say? Before the prophet could get halfway where, to the middle court, that means he left what he left where Hezekiah was. He only had taken a few steps mm. before God turned around and said, go back and tell him this. Suddenly, Hezekiah was praying. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to how suddenly this was. Hezekiah was praying. God said, I seen you and I heard you. Go back and tell him what I said. Woo. Tracy. This is what God is saying in this hour. If you get a word, you don't, you, it, it's a harsh word. I'm giving you time to change and I can change the situation suddenly. Watch this. It says, he said, I heard you. I, I've heard your prayer. Hezekiah's prayer was important. If Hezekiah had not prayed, watch this. If Hezekiah had not prayed, his life would not have been extended. Oh, God, I love you. If Hez when we pray, if Hezekiah had not prayed, his life would not be extended. If we, listen, when we pray, there have been times y'all have heard me tell my testimony of sickness. And I remember one time they was trying to tell me that um, we got to do um, an exam because we see cancer cells in your uterus. We see cancer cells. They everywhere. We see cancer cells. And I begin to say, OK, 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 I know this is in my bloodline, but God, I know you to be a healer. And on the table, mm, on the table as they were doing the exam, I, I was in my mind, me and God was talking. I said, God, I know you to be a healer. God, I know you to be a deliverer. God, I know you to be a way maker. God, you said I should live and not die. God, you told me, listen, God, you told me that I will preach your gospel. God, you told, and this was before I had any children, but God started reminding me of what he had told me. And so I began to pray it, into, pray it to God as they were doing the exam. When they did the exam, that they went out and they came back and they began to tell me, they said, well, what we have is you don't have cancer it's something else tears just begin to stream i say god and that's when i started realizing that there is a vein in prayer that i can tap into when i call on that great oh jesus when i'm on shit hey Mm. When I call on that great name, I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what situation I'm in. But when I call on that name, he is a suddenly God. And he shows up every time. Watch this. And it says, it says, so Hezekiah prayed. If he had not prayed, God would not extend his life. Could it be at times that you don't understand that when you get a bad doctor's report, if you would just pray, God could do it suddenly. If you would just pray and not. What is your default setting? Mm, when you get bad news, what do you do? Oh, Lord. Or do you just start praying? God, I know you are Alpha and Omega. God, you are beginning and the end. God, you are the great I am. God, you said the king's heart is in your hand. You can turn it. I don't care if they turn me, if the, if the alone was denied. God, I know who you are. What is your default setting? What will you do when you get bad news? Will you turn your face to the wall or will you call your friends? Will you turn your face to the wall or will you start complaining? Will you turn your face to the wall or will you, will you start moaning and grumbling? What is your default setting? Mine is to always call on that great name. Watch this. And it says, when Hezekiah prayed, listen, because you always reap. Oh God, you are almost sad. Oh God, you always reap more than you sow, even in prayer. 
Uh oh, not just with your money. You always reap more than you sow. What did Hezekiah pray? Hezekiah began to pray. God said, I'm going to give you 15 more years, and then through you, I'm going to deliver my people. Mm. Oh, God. Oh, God. When we pray, and God shows up, how oh God, he always supersedes what we asked him for. Watch this. It says, you always reap more than you sow in the natural and also in the spiritual. Hezekiah sowed in tears. Watch this. But he reaped in, in extended life. He reaped in prosperity. He reaped in security. He reaped in safety. First, he gave the gift of extended life. God extended his life. Second, he gave the gift of knowing he had only 15 years left. If he were wise, this would still give him, King Hezekiah the motivation, watch this, to get right. He saved his people through Hezekiah. He delivered his people through Hezekiah. He said, I'm giving you 15 years to get your whole life in order. I'm giving you 15 years. Wouldn't it be something if God told us, Elizabeth, I'm giving you 10 years to do everything I told you to do, then I'm going to call you home. Would you not walk the straight, oh Jesus, would you not walk the straight and narrow? Some people would look at it as a, some people would look at that and say, that's a death sentence. No, baby, that's my ticket in. <laughs> he telling me how exactly how much time I got, oh Jesus, exactly how much time I got left. But this is what God does when he warns us. He's giving you a chance to get right. He's giving you a chance. Whenever God, oh Jesus, thank you this morning. Whenever God warns us, he's given us a chance to get to that expected end. He's given us a chance to receive what he has in store for us. He said, look, I want to give you this right here. I want to give you complete healing. So I'm going to warn you first that this is what you need to do in order to receive it. Do we not serve a great God? I'm going to warn you. I'm going to help you to get to what I'm trying to give you. Oh Jesus, I'm going to warn you to help you to receive what I already got in store for you. I'm going to warn you so you don't miss it. Mm, Jesus, watch this. And then he says, through you, I'm going to defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of the people to come. This promise was in accord with the Lord's previous prophecies of deliverance. Listen, that go all the way back to Isaiah. Listen, the connection of the two promises indicates that one will confirm the other. When Hezekiah recovered from his sickness, he could know that God would also deliver the people. Mm, 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 mm. Everything was lining up. Watch this. Hezekiah, in a sense, got double for his trouble. Oh, God. Drop in that chat. Double, 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 double. Hezekiah got double for his trouble. Listen to this. God, God changed his mind. Listen. Not about the sentence, but about the timing. Watch this. Listen, listen to these. Listen to these. I got two more scriptures. Then I promise y'all I'm gonna get off here. I got two more scriptures when God changed his mind with the timing. Watch this because God is so strategic. Watch this. Jeremiah 18 and 8. He said, If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent. That means I will change my mind of the disaster that I thought to bring against it. I'll change the severity of it. Uh-oh. God will change the severity because whatever you reap, baby, you gonna sow, good or bad. So it's not that you won't reap. He may change the severity of your reaping. Whoo, this is, listen, you will reap what you sow because God is not like man. He cannot lie. But what he can do is change the severity of your sentence. Oh, God, he can change the severity of your sentence. We see it happen in court all the time. We have seen people that you absolutely killed somebody. You supposed to get life. You go before the judge. Listen to this. And the judge say, well, I'm just going to sentence you to, prob to probation. And we're looking like, wait, what? Huh? God says, I can change the severity, but you're still going to pay for what you did. Mm. there's still going to be a consequence for you for what you did, but I can change the severity of the sentence. Oh God, I love you this morning. Watch this. And here's, here's another one. Exodus 39, Exodus 32, 9 through 14. Listen to this. 
Exodus 32, 9 through 14. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff necked. That means hard headed. They don't listen. They, they rebellious. He says, I've seen these people and they are stiff necked. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and I'm going to destroy every one of them. Mm, watch this. Then I will make you into a great nation. Watch this. But Moses prayed. Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. And he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and with your mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it is with this evil intent that he brought them out only to kill them in the mountain? Turn from your anger, God. Relent. Here we go again. Relent, God. Change your mind. Do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self that you will make your descendants numerous. Watch this. Verse 14. Then the Lord changed his mind and did not bring disaster on his people as he threatened. Did they still pay for what they did? Absolutely. They still wandered for 40 years. <laughs> but does he didn't kill them. Oh, Jesus, I love you this morning. What is God saying this morning? What is God saying? I'll reap what you sow. You will pay the price for what you did, but I can change the severity of that thing. When we pray, when we pray, let, let us go into prayer. Father God, we lift you up and we magnify that great and that mighty name. God, we thank you this morning for giving us your word. We thank you this morning to God for reminding us that you are an amansita. Oh God, that you are a suddenly God, that you are a God that shows up. You are a God that shows up right on time. You are a God that do what you want to do. You're sovereign. Mm. You're a sovereign God. You move by your power, by your might when you need to. I hear God saying this morning, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Turn your face to the wall. Stop talking to people. Stop going to people. Turn your face to the wall. I've seen your tears. I've seen you crying. I've heard your prayers, but I need you to turn your face to the wall. I need you to get in my presence. I need you to shut out the world. I need you to get with me so I can give you this next move. I need you to commune with me. I am a suddenly God and I want to do some things right now. Say if the Lord God, I want to do some things right now, today, today, today. I want to do some things right now, but I need you to get out of yourself. Oh God, I need you to get out of yourself. I need you to get in my presence. I need you to seek my face because I can change the severity. You will pay the consequences for what you did, but I can change the severity of it. Yes, you did it. Ooh, oh God. Yes, you did it. Yes, you're guilty, but I can change the severity of it. I am a suddenly God before you get up off your knees. I can have, I can deliver the answer before you get up off your knees. I can give you a strategy before you get up off your knees. I can show you how to do it, when to do it and, 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 and the direction to do it. And when you, before you get up off your knees, I am a suddenly God. Ah, oh God. And what I'm going to do, listen, and what I'm going to do is not going to be based on your works. It's going to be based on your faith. Do you believe this morning? that I am a God of suddenly. Do you believe this morning that I can move when I wanna move? Do you believe this morning that I can change the trajectory of your life right now? Do you believe this morning, even though they see cancer, I can erase it? Do you believe this morning, even though they see diabetes, lymphedema, I can erase it? Do you believe this morning? I am a God of suddenly. I can save your children. I don't care how far out there they been. He said, I can go in right now and wreak havoc and they might to me. He said, I am a God of suddenly. Don't you stop praying. Turn your face to the wall. Shut out the world. Mm. Shut out the world. Shut out the world. Turn your face towards me. He said, I can release financial breakthrough. If you turn your face towards me, what is your default setting? What is your default setting? Will you pray or will you complain? Will you pray or will you mumber? Will you pray or will you fuss? Will you pray or will you cuss? Will you pray or will you call people? What is your default setting? I am the God of suddenly. Ah, he said, and when you pray, not only do I hear, but I answer. Not only do I see your tears, but I answer. Not only, woo God, he said, not only do I see your tears, but your prayer, revelation, your prayers have come up to me, have come up to my nostrils as a sweet smelling incense. Will you pray? My God today, listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. There is absolutely 
nothing you can do about it many of you have already begun to sow and when you sow this morning i want you to tag that suddenly mm. some of us need suddenly breakthroughs i need you to tag that seed as suddenly this morning suddenly 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 listen i love you there's absolutely nothing you can do about it i'll be back here in the morning make sure you are tagging make sure you are sharing so people can hear the word of the lord and let the, watch this because this this word these prayer calls i love them because it is strengthening the body of christ it is strengthening his remnant to let them know that they're not alone to let them know that god if god be for you who can be against you it, it, to let them know that satan is not winning he's still a defeated foe but listen, I want you, I want you to help me to evangelize, to get this word out. Why? Because God is doing a miraculous thing. He's performing miracles. He is a God of suddenly. Listen, I will see you back here in the morning at 5.30 a.m. I will be showing this for the replay. God bless you, Karen. I, I, will, I will be showing this as a replay tonight at 7. So if you didn't get all the notes, you can wait till 7 o'clock tonight. Get on in, get all the notes, all the scriptures. Listen, I love you. There is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Let's make this a week of the suddenly. I, be I believe God. Drop that in the chat before you log off. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. This is your week of suddenly. I want you to have a great day on purpose. I see you in the morning, 530 a.m.